I'm gonna teach you one of the fastest ways to raise your credit score. On today's episode, we are going to cover authorized users. Yes, it is in fact one of the fastest ways to raise your credit score, but there's a lot of pros and there's a lot of cons and I'm gonna cover them all because I look at thousands of credit reports every month and I see a lot of people doing this and a lot of people just don't understand how authorized user accounts work and how to do it properly. One of my favorite or maybe not favorite um, types of authorized users are couples, okay? If you're going to become an authorized user on your wife's credit card or your wife's gonna become an authorized user on your husband's credit card, you need to understand some, there's two purposes to this. One is to help each other build credit, okay? Because you're gonna get all the payment history and you're, gonna get the, you're going to get the credit limit that's added to your credit file. But the biggest part about this for couples is accountability, okay? I'll give you an example. <laughs> My wife's not gonna like that I'm gonna talk about this, but I'm gonna talk about it. If she carries a balance, I know about it. And then we could be sitting on the couch and I'm like, yo, what's up with this balance that you're carrying? And she'll turn to me and say, mind your business, it's my credit card. Well, yeah, but it's affecting me. So like, why, why are you carrying this balance? I just forgot to pay it, I'll pay it right now, okay? So the accountability feature is, is a really big one when you do this with a significant other. And this is the major thing that a lot of couples don't do. Hold each other accountable so you can both achieve your goals together. It's not just about the benefits, it's about helping each other get those get to those goals much faster. And when you're holding each other accountable, it's gonna be much easier. The biggest mistake that couples make, married couples specifically, is they add each other on to their significant other's credit card and they just don't care. They Because they don't understand how it works. So when I look at a couple's, you know, two different credit files, completely separate, but they both have a goal, they're trying to work on their credit, the first thing I say is, um, whose credit card is this? It's an authorized user. Oh, it's my wife's. So you're okay with her carrying this massive balance? Oh, well, I'm not gonna say anything to her. <laughs> and I get it, I understand where they're coming from. But at the same time, this is what's very important to understand. You have to care about it. You have to pay attention to it because it's going to affect you in a negative fashion. So let's get into why this is affecting you in a negative fashion. There's a couple of different types of names that people use in the industry or just people talking about this all together. Authorized users. So we'll use this card as an example. You know, my Navy Federal flagship rewards card, okay? I can add anybody on as an authorized user. Some people call this a trade line or adding people on to trade lines, okay? A trade line for personal credit is just that, an authorized user to the main account holder's account. And all you gotta do is go into your account and you add that person on as an authorized user. Now, what is the purpose for this is the real big question that people ask all the time. So the real purpose is when you add somebody onto a credit card as an authorized user, I'll give you an example, my little brother. My little brother turned 18, he had zero credit in his name. You know, he had no credit. So what do you do to help that? How do you help them jumpstart their credit? So I added my little brother on, we'll talk about this as an example. I added him on to two of my credit cards as an authorized user. Now, I added him on as an authorized user of credit cards that had already been open for more than 10 years, okay? so. That's a really big deal because he has no credit. He has no age of credit. So what I'm doing is once I add him to the credit card as an authorized user, he's gonna get 10 years of positive payment history that's instantaneously injected into his credit file. And he's also gonna get the credit limit. So this is a $25,000 credit card. He's gonna get that credit limit on his credit report also. So he gets all the information from this credit card, only this credit card, not my personal information, nothing to do with my credit score, only the information from this credit card, okay? He gets all that instantaneously injected into his credit file. And now all of a sudden he has a credit score. All right, so what happened when we added him onto these credit cards? Now first off, I have to retract something from earlier. It wasn't a 10 year credit card. We added him to a five year and a six year a credit card that had been open for that long amount of time, so he had a combined of 11 years of credit history that was added. So, I'm gonna put it, up, put it up on the screen right here. This is his credit score from Experian. So we, we added him two days before the statement closing date onto these credit cards. Once the statement closing date hit, then the credit card company reported it like a couple of days later, 
and he instantaneously in less than 30 days had generated a 751 credit score on on all these credit bureaus okay Experian, Equifax and TransUnion but the one I'm showing you is from Experian so but here's the caveat pay attention to the screen to where it says credit usage his utilization came in at 12 percent because he doesn't remember he's only got two credit cards on there one of them has a balance and the other one doesn't so it's hurting his credit score he's carrying 12 percent utilization if this credit card wouldn't and would have not carried a balance his score would have been much higher 760 to probably about 780 okay but he still came in pretty solid okay at a 751 that's not bad by any means but this is a really good example for you guys to understand when you're carrying a balance it has a negative impact on someone else's credit file when they are an authorized user if you haven't already make sure to hit that subscribe button that way every time we drop new content anything new happens on our channel you're gonna hear about it first okay if you want to hear about anything specific any topics that i haven't talked about drop it in the comment section we're trying to help every one of our subscribers and followers out there that want to learn more about everything credit so drop some emojis drop some comments in the comment section and share this with your friends and family so they can learn about authorized users too because a lot of people just don't understand this there's a lot of misconce misconceptions out there about authorized user accounts and if you're looking to work on your credit we are a full service credit management company we have created the most advanced diy program in the industry we cut out all the nonsense no templates are used for this program these are custom made letters fifty dollars a month we will create your letters your custom metro to attack letters attacking negative accounts on your credit reports yeah literally i said fifty dollars a month okay that's insane okay we will create your letters email them you print them and you mail them out and you're done it's just that simple there's nothing else in the industry like it there's no template letters that are being used here we threw that in the basura where it belongs okay so my link is gonna be in the description for the dispute like a pro okay that's gonna be in the description always all of my trusted links will be in the description okay you can't miss that now we do offer a full service Metro 2 program and we do offer a full service expedited pre litigation program that is designed to sue and we also do offer the identity theft program for people that have really had their identity stolen and the credit bureaus just refuse to do anything which happens a lot you'd be sure you'd be shocked okay and always remember last part's the most important if you haven't already hit that bell notification so that way you find out every time I go live anytime I drop new content you're gonna hear about it first all right so I think you kind of learned a very good lesson here that if you're carrying a balance on that credit card that you're putting somebody on as an authorized user it's going to negatively impact that person's credit file so you need to make sure that you're not carrying a balance on whoever you're going to become an authorized user on so let's let's kind of talk about this whole balance thing okay and how it affects somebody so if you're going to become an authorized user on someone's credit card that credit card cannot be carrying a balance that's rule number one number two is you cannot be carrying any late payments any late payments that that credit card has that person is going to get those added to their credit report also okay this is very important to understand two things no balances and no late payments because it is going to negatively impact that person's credit report all right so we covered the whole late payments and no balances right so now here's a very important part if you're going to do this as an authorized user you need to understand that do not do this with any american express credit cards because american express does not give you the the previous payment history from when that card was open it will only give it to that authorized user from the moment they are added moving forward okay american express is the only one that does this so do not use authorized user accounts when you're trying to boost someone's credit file or anything like that the only thing that could potentially help them if you if you do use an american express credit card is if the credit card credit card limit is above ten thousand dollars or it's a really big credit card limit that can help them so remember that American Express is the only one that does not give you previous payment history, which is the whole reason why we're doing this, okay? So just remember that everyone else is perfectly fine all the way across the board. All right, so I waited to the last part of the video to tell you about the most important part because we all know the last part's the most important, right? So if you add somebody on to an authorized user account 
and they have bad credit. You're not going to see the same result that you would if you were to add somebody to like my credit file that has no negative items. If I have no late payments, no charge offs, I'm not carrying a balance on any of my credit, okay? If I don't have any of those and my credit file is squeaky clean, this is going to have a huge positive impact on my credit file. But if you add somebody on as an authorized user that has a raggedy bad credit file, then guess what? You're not going to see the same effects. It's going to be very minimal. It's going to be a waste of time, money, and energy, okay? So understand that. If you add somebody on as an authorized user and they have a bad credit file, they got a bunch of collections, charge-offs, all kinds of nonsense, it's not going to have a great impact. Don't waste your time and energy thinking that, oh, I'm going to add them on as an authorized user. It's going to fix everything. It's not. It really isn't. You're just wasting your time and energy because that person needs to work on their credit file to get these negative items removed first. And then once you're done removing all these negative items, then you can add the authorized user to your to that person's credit file. Then it will have a huge impact on their credit file because remember, you're adding age of credit and a credit limit from when the inception of that credit card was open. My general rule when I'm going to do this is I want it to be 10 years of payment history and um, over a $10,000 credit limit. That's gonna have a massive impact. Like on my little brothers, he was able to get a $10,000 line of credit immediately when he applied for a Quicksilver, one, a Quicksilver credit card, okay, with Capital One, and we went for entry level because he has no credit file. Even if you have a bunch of authorized user accounts, not every credit card company is gonna give you a credit card because you don't have any primaries in your name. Okay. Oh, don't worry. There's more. This is a really, really good topic. and It's got a lot of information. Let's keep going. So again, don't add anybody on to an authorized user account that has raggedy credit. It's just that simple. It's not going to help them fix any of their issues. Okay. And you cannot have a buttload of, of authorized user accounts on your credit file because that can be a really huge red flag to any type of lender. And what can happen is they can potentially rescore you and remove those authorized user accounts because you don't have any primaries. Primaries are accounts that are in your name. So when you get an authorized user account, you want to start building and getting other lines of credit in your name. Those are just there to temporarily help you. And this is a very important thing to understand. Becoming an authorized user does not guarantee that your score will rise very quickly. People also believe that that's what it does and that's not exactly what it's built to do. It's built to give you age of credit and it's not guaranteed. So if you're out here trying to purchase trade lines, we should cover that right now too. Let's do it. If you're out there trying to purchase trade lines or authorized user accounts, don't do business with any shady people, okay? Understand that. You need to do business with somebody that's been doing this for a while. We don't, we don't sell trade lines, okay? Because it's illegal for a credit repair company to sell trade lines to any of their clients because at that point, you're basically saying that you're going to manipulate their credit score and increase their credit score. There's some people that do that, but understand credit repair organizations cannot sell you trade lines. It's illegal. Okay. It's very illegal. So anybody that's doing that, eh, it's, it's no bueno. Okay. So don't do it. Now, anybody that you do business with has to be a trusted person because some of these trade lines can be very expensive from what I've seen online and different companies that offer them. Okay. So you have to be very careful. You need to understand, even if you purchase a trade line, it is not guaranteed because for whatever reason, if that company decides that nah, we're not going to report that, it's not the person who you bought it from's fault. It's the actual credit card company. that's like, we're not going to report it. We don't care. We don't have to. If you're adding them on as an authorized user. We gave you the card. We did what we said we we're going to do. They don't have to report. And a lot of times it might not report to all three credit bureaus. It might just report to one or two or none. Okay. Um, it happens. So a lot of people think that it's like scammer business and stuff like that. It's not necessarily a scam. It's just the fact that it, this is a very risky business that you, that you got into. And unfortunately it didn't report properly. So understanding this is not going to fix your credit score issue and it may not work. This is one of the biggest reasons why it's really important that you do this with someone that you know and trust. And more than anything, we tell people do it with a friend or a family member, you know them, you trust them. You know, and maybe that friend or family member would get the money, but you have to understand that this is a very risky situation and it might not work. Sometimes it doesn't for whatever reason. And if you have a negative account with that company, 
Okay, this is the last part right here. If you have a negative account, a charge off with, um, let's say, American Express, Citibank, Capital One, okay, they have the right to deny you as an authorized user. So it definitely won't work if you owe them some money. Why would you try to get on as an authorized user with a credit card company that you had a charge off account with? Let that sink in, okay? So this is very important for you to understand that if you had a bad account with them, they can blacklist you and you will never be able to get in, whether it be as an authorized user or as a primary account holder. Always remember that. A lot of people fail to realize that and they're like, oh, they won't take me. Well, duh. Okay. Also, if you were included, if you included one of those accounts in a bankruptcy, it is still considered negative and they may not let you come back into that company as an authorized user either. And always remember, subscribe to increase your credit score.